I'm Cole Blaylock. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a sushi lover. And I'm a liar. And don't get me wrong, I'm no run-of-the-mill fibber either. No, I am a grade A, highly decorated fraud, a deceiver and a charlatan. I am so good at it that I do it daily. And not only do I do it daily, it is part of my full-time job. And no, I'm not a good liar because of the things that I tell you. No, I'm a good liar because of the things that I allow you to tell yourself. I have spent the last 20 years of my life dedicated to deception. I have spent those two decades becoming a magician. And I've had experiences that have taken me to amazing places. And through these experiences, I've learned truths. Truths about people and what's out there in life, but most importantly about myself. And as an advocate for mental health awareness, I apply these truths to that facet of life. But please, I believe they can be applied in so many different ways. So take the experiences I've had and the examples I give and apply them however you see fit. Because remember, it's not what I tell you that's important. It's what you tell yourself. Stay down. (laughs) Would you guys like to hear a few lines that I hear almost every time someone finds out I'm a magician? Yeah? All right, here we go. Here's the first one. My uncle's a magician. He can do everything you can. Okay, cool. Fine. (laughs) Here's the next one. I know this one card trick, it has three rows of seven, there's 21 cards, you think of one, do you know how it's done? Yeah, anyone with YouTube does. <laughs> oh, and then here's, here's a really good one, here's a really good one, and some of you are probably thinking it. Can you make my wife disappear? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't, but keep it up, you're doing a good job yourself. <laughs> She'll be gone before long. You see, these have historically been my responses because I want to tell you how annoyed I have always gotten when these things come up and I'll tell you why. Because how much arrogance and conceit does it take when someone is talking about their life purpose for you to put yourself on top of it? Because look, I chose professional magician as a career path. I'm the center of attention here. And then something changed. Something changed when I realized this wasn't about conceit and this wasn't about arrogance. No, this was about something so important. This was about genuine human connection. Because right now, you don't see a husband and you don't see a father. And it'd be weird if you saw a sushi lover because you all see (laughs) the liar, the magician. Because that's the context we're in right now. So when these people see that, they step into my world. They go onto my playing field in vastly unfamiliar territory just in the hopes of connecting with me. If it were about them, they would change it to something they know, they love, they care about. But it's still about me. So I stepped outside of my world of 52 playing cards and I started to look at what other people experience and I listened to conversations And I noticed this happened to other people. As I would listen to other people talk, I heard people expressing their interest in other people giving these same anecdotal interjections. So I'd like to invite all of you for the next seven days to pay attention to this while you're speaking with people about what you love and what you care about. Pay attention to how many people come into your world, they leave what they know and love 
to connect with you, and this will change you, especially when you understand why. Why they do it. It's because you and me, we're worth connecting to. You see, not only have I learned how powerful connection is and the transformative ability that it has, I've learned something about humanity through the way people react to magic. Let me rewind for a second because I don't think you understand the audacity of what I just said. I've unlocked the truth of human existence through card tricks. (laughs) Can we just talk about how ridiculous that is for a second? (laughs) But, no, I'd like to paint a picture for you. And and do you mind if, if I talk to you? You can stay right there. Do you mind if I talk to you for just a moment? What is your name? Gretchen. Gretchen, I'm going to use you to paint a picture. And so for the next few moments, it's just you and me, individual. I would like to do this for everyone. I just don't have the time. (laughs) So you guys are all invited to watch. Put More than that, put yourself in Gretchen's shoes. Okay. So from now on, for the next few minutes, when I say Gretchen, know that I'm talking to you. And I'm also talking to you individually. I'm talking to you one-on-one because right now we're no longer a crowd. We're a a, a Gretchen. (laughs) Gretchen, I'd like you to do something for me. I want you to imagine that you're at a small get-together or a party. Uh, You don't know everyone there, but you know enough people to be comfortable. Things are going well. The music is nice. The environment is nice. The food is great. You start to meet a few people, and you and I meet for the very first time. We start to chat about who we are and what we do. I mentioned that I'm a magician. You mentioned your love for 14th century Bulgarian pottery, right? Uh, Naturally. And so we begin to talk. We, We have a connection. And then you inevitably ask to see a magic trick, right? So I oblige. Okay. So I want you to imagine that I, I have a deck of cards. And I pull out those deck of, that deck of cards. And uh, I want you to imagine that I take those cards and I start to go through them. One at a time. And then you just tell me when to stop. Stop. Right there? Okay, no, no, why not? Great, great answer here. We'll take that one out. All right, I want you to imagine that you look at that card. Okay. All right, uh, and this is one-on-one, but we have the advantage of having a lot of Gretchen here. So in case you forget, we have some backups here. Okay, so I want you to imagine that I go to put it right on top of the deck. And the moment that it's about to hit the top of the deck, Gretchen, you say, no, no, put it in the middle. I'm sorry, what was that? In the middle. Oh, classic Gretchen. You, you and your skepticism towards patriarchy. Here we go. <laughs> right, right, look, look, right here goes into the middle of the deck. Boom. Just, just like that. Uh, and then we start to give those, give those a shuffle. Look, give those a nice shuffle. Gretchen. I would like you to give me a number between 1 and 52. 17. 17. I'm going to give you one chance to change your mind. (laughs) That patriarchy again. No, I said 17. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've counted 16 cards into my hand, and there's one right here, the 17th card. You could have chosen any card. What card did you choose? Um, Gretchen's help? Gretchen's help? The Jack of Diamonds. Diamonds, Because, look, you could have... (laughs) You could have chosen any card. And you could have chosen any number, but you chose the Jack of Diamonds at 17. And I want you to imagine that we're at this party. This has all happened. And 
please, just for the sake of this, imagine that I'm about to turn over the Jack of Diamonds. Yeah. Right, because. I'd like you to imagine that that actually just happened. Right. Okay. I can tell each and every one of you your next move, what you do next. And I can tell you this <laughs> and stay down. <laughs> and I can tell you this because I've been on both sides of the story a thousand times. You're going to go grab your friend that you came with and you're going to walk him back in here and you're going to say, hey, do it again. <laughs> And if your friend is too far away or has already left, you're going to grab the nearest acquaintance. And if it's not an acquaintance, the nearest stranger. And if it's not a stranger, you're going to grab your nearest enemy. You just want someone to see this. <laughs> Why do you do this? And I think the answer is twofold. It's two opposite sides of the same coin. Firstly, you do this because you just experience something amazing, joyful, happy, astounding, and you want someone else to feel that. That's why we walk around uh, recommending movies, books, TV shows, songs, experiences, because we want someone else to feel what we felt. The second side of that is a little more selfish, but inherently more beautiful. You see, every time I learn magic or see magic, and then I decide to perform it, I can no longer experience it like you have. As a matter of fact, everything I do today, you will no longer be able to experience it for the first time. So, we get someone else to experience it so we can experience joy vicariously through them. I can no longer get that, so I travel the country giving this to other people just so I can get some of it back. My wife, her favorite part of watching me do magic is watching other people watch me do magic. <laughs> She's seen all that I have, so she loves to watch that excitement and that joy through other people. So this means that happiness shared is happiness amplified? Adversely to that, pain and sorrow shared, that's pain and sorrow diminished. Because we're just better together. I'd like to share one story with you guys, and I don't often share this, uh, and especially not this publicly, but I feel that it's important. That's me. I've always been the guy with the smile. The trick up his sleeve, just one more joke, a good time and a positive outlook on life. At least that's what I've let people see. And for the most part, that's been true. But for as long as I can remember, I've had to push certain feelings away. because I didn't want anyone to feel like there was something wrong with me. So I got good at smiling. I got good at lying. I remember the first time that I tried to get help. I was 12 years old and a teacher at school, she gave a mental health survey and I answered in earnest and the results came back, needs mental health evaluation immediately. So then, of course, she proceeds to call me to the front of the room, reads out my results publicly, says that she can do the evaluation right there because me, I'm just the center of attention and I'm just looking for fun and nothing is wrong and everything is fine and we all got a big kick out of that. 
So I kept smiling. And I kept lying. I kept smiling until October 26, 2019. You guys remember those points from earlier? How connectivity can change us? And how we're just better together? Yeah, on October 26, 2019, I stood in the freezing cold. Feeling connected to no one. Feeling more alone than I had ever been. Feeling broken and dragged down. But you know what? At least I had that smile. I made a decision that night that no one would ever see that smile again. And uh, I'm sitting in front of you here today, so spoiler alert, that plan didn't go all the way through. (laughs) There hasn't been a day since then that I haven't been grateful because I drove home with tears in my eyes. I walked through the door and I saw my sleeping children. I fell in the arms of my beautiful wife. And I got help. I started to see real magic. More than sleight of hand and illusion. I started to see that Connectivity can change us. I started to see that we are just stronger when we're together. And I saw that what's been broken can be healed. And what's been dragged down can rise again. I saw truth through the lens of a liar. Thank you.